So in this lesson, we're talking about JavaScript SEO basics. Nowadays, more than 97% of all sites are using some kind of JavaScript. This means that Google's regular crawler essentially can't see what's happening in those areas because you know, JavaScript is executed on the client side. So if you go to the browser, the changes that are happening within the browser and you know, not on the server side, they are invisible. So Google misses all of that. The crawler that Google built ages ago has of course been updated frequently, but you know, it is still not capable of rendering a website. That means that if Google hadn't done something about it, they'd be missing out on all the changes in the front end on the client side. So one of the things Google had to do was to build a crawler that was actually capable of executing and rendering client side actions, mainly through JavaScript. So the goal was for Google to understand what, would be, what you would be presented with in a modern web browser. Google wanted to see that as well while crawling your website. So essentially in the past, when you looked at the HTML markup, you saw what the crawler saw. Now this is entirely different. If you look at a website which is using any kind of client-side JavaScript front-end framework, you only see some very cryptic stuff, but not the real content itself. If you render the site, on the other hand, then the content would be dynamically injected. That is what Google was concerned about, that you know, they would eventually miss important content on the web. So let's have a look at the process that is happening right now. Because currently we have this old classic crawl still going on. So based on that, we have an instant first wave of indexing based on the classic crawl data. As more resources become available, Google have started to render that same website and to add further data taken from the rendering process. Google basically takes the additional information and adds it to the initial data that they have been collecting in the classic crawl. So in a nutshell, this means that they still do the regular old-fashioned text-based crawling. And then on top of that, they have this new and beautiful JavaScript rendering to see you know, what's going on there as well and to see if there's anything hidden that they might have missed in their initial crawl. Client-side JavaScript means extra work for Google. Keep that in mind. So the process has multiple steps and the second wave is way slower, which ultimately leads to kind of delayed indexing. So the optimal scenario would be that the main content and all critical links would be directly available in the HTML source code. rel equals canonical and also rel equals mphtml should be in the markup as well to be sure that Google picks it up straight away. JavaScript should and can further enhance a page's functionality, but ultimately it should not replace it altogether. Also, it's important to understand that Google right now is using a very old version of the Chrome browser for rendering. So that's Chrome version 41 to render your site. This version was released back in March 2015. It is literally ancient. If you compare the features of Chrome 41 with a Chrome 66, you will see significant differences. So even if you debug in your current browser and everything works well, you know, with Google continuing to use a very old version, there just may be still differences. So it would be wise if you work with JavaScript from an SEO perspective to run kind of this old version of Chrome with a developer console on your local machine to be able to understand you know, what's going on there. Also, Google has what's called the rich results testing tool that shows the computed document object model. If you combine that with regular markup, you could then take something like diffchecker.com and then compare the markup versus the computed markup to see what the major differences are. On the left hand side, you would see the HTML source. On the right hand side, you would see the computed document object model out of the rich testing tool. Now you can easily spot differences and start debugging and understanding you know, what's wrong and what not. There's also a great research by a company called Elephate about JavaScript frameworks. If you work with it, be sure to not miss this out. So here are some of our key findings when dealing with JavaScript and SEO. Google algorithms try to detect if a resource is necessary from a rendering point of view. If not, it probably won't be fetched by Googlebot. Although the exact timeout is not specified, it said that Google can't wait longer than five seconds for a script to execute. If your site is slow, Google might have issues related to rendering your content. You know, this can also slow down the crawling process as well. 
Use Google Mobile Friendly Testing. It can show you the rendered document object model and the errors that Google encountered while rendering your page. Don't use the cache for JavaScript sites. What you see when checking the cache is how your browser interprets the HTML that is collected by Googlebot. It's totally unrelated to how Google rendered your page. So generally, you should make sure that any internal and external resources required for rendering are not blocked for Googlebot. Remember that Googlebot is not a real user. So you can assume that it doesn't click, you know, it doesn't fill forms. When you want to use canonical tags, make sure that they are placed in the plain HTML or in the xrobots headers. Canonical tags injected by JavaScript are considered to be less reliable and the chances are that Google will ignore them altogether. So JavaScript in SEO is kind of a moving target. Really keep that in mind that things kind of change on a daily basis. There's a great guide from LFA that you should get familiar with if you're dealing with JavaScript and SEO.